This happened back in September of 2017. Me and a good buddy of mine went camping at Lake Murray, Oklahoma. The place happened to be dark, very dark, where we were camping. And me and him, while setting up the tent, since we kind of got there a little later than normal, saw something that freaked both of us out. At first, it appeared to be just some sort of shadow, but it was moving. We also both noticed how unusually tall it was. And at first, my friend and I both kind of bantered back and forth if it was a person, maybe it was a park ranger, we didn't know. But the figure was moving very, very strangely. We couldn't really discern whether it was coming towards us or going deeper into the woods or even going left and right. It was kind of swaying back and forth, and maybe after a few moments of watching it, or him, or whoever it was, we came to the conclusion it was probably just somebody who was drunk. So we ignored it, went back to setting up our tent, and that was that. My friend and I shared the same small tent, so we climbed inside, getting ready to shut down for the night. But that's when we started hearing some strange growling noises, if that's what we could even call them. My friend and I both looked at each other, with the same kind of, did you hear that expression on our face. We grabbed our military grade flashlights, turned them on, and walked outside the tent. We shined them both in that direction that we saw this thing before, but we didn't see it. And at the time, you have to remember, we both were convinced it was a person, a drunken person. And I guess, in our minds, we thought this person was about to stir up some trouble. We weren't about that. So we started shining our lights around, and not too far off were these small little beads of light. They would turn out to be red eyes. Red eyes of whatever this thing was. So we shined a light on it. We could see the tiny little beads of light. And then this being, and I say being because I don't know what it was, stood up. And we could tell it was some sort of wolf creature, covered in this long, dangly fur. Matted, almost. It looked disgusting. I swear, this thing, whether it was a person in a costume or not, looked completely savage. My friend and I both shut off the light and scurried back in our tent completely crapless, and I say that because, well, we pretty much emptied our pants right then and there after seeing this thing. What's also really weird is the night went completely silent after that. The crickets now seemed to be dead. There wasn't any noise. You could hear a pen drop outside of her tent. It was eerily quiet. My dad's been a longtime hunter, and he always used to tell me, be careful when the woods go quiet. It generally means there's a large predator nearby. Now, I don't know if that has anything to do with what we experienced, but something definitely happened. Something that has bothered me. It took a while for us to fall asleep. I don't think I fell asleep for a few more hours, but we never heard anything come near our tent. And the rest of the night stayed completely silent. I still don't know exactly what that creature was that we saw. I say creature because I'm convinced it was not somebody in a costume. This looked like a real life creature, or animal, whatever. We got up in the morning and both agreed to dismantle our tent, pack it up and maybe go somewhere else. There wasn't any more talk about the creature or what it could have been. We just accepted it for what it was and moved on with our life like many people who submit stories to you should probably do. Also, when we were dismantling our tent, I didn't try and take any time looking for tracks or anything out of place or out of the ordinary. I didn't smell, see, or hear anything out of the ordinary either. Just that one sighting the night before. There was nobody else nearby in the spot we were at. So, again, I have no idea what it is we experienced but I have a feeling it was supernatural. I believe I saw something that wasn't human 
back in July of 2017 while camping with my family in Mississippi. The area, as it turned out, was pretty dark at night. Imagine that. But usually with moonlight. This area, in which I've camped before with my family, is pretty bright. I guess those are only the nights that I remember that actually had full moonlight. This night, there was practically no moon visibility, so it was a little more eerie. Our camping was pretty ghetto, too. We didn't have a fancy RV. We just kind of camped in the back of my parents' car. And as we're sitting there, lying down, trying to go to sleep, remember, it's probably about 10.30 p.m., and we hear this soft sound coming from outside the car. At first, my sister and I started to hear it. I don't think my parents did. It kind of resembled this soft whispering noise, but then quickly turned into this grunting sound. My sister and I sat up, looking out the window to see what made the noise. We didn't see anything, but at that moment, we noticed both our parents snoring away. They must have been exhausted from the drive. A minute later, we see this wolf-like creature walking in front of our car, and it turned and looked directly into the car, right at my sister and I. We both covered our mouths in unison, trying our best not to scream. After all, we didn't want to wake up mom and dad. This thing was tall and had very long back bent legs. It didn't appear to walk fast, but I guess it spotted us and then just decided to walk off, casually, like nothing ever happened. Like what it had just did was business as usual. See, I never believed this sort of stuff until now. But when I saw what this thing looked like, I couldn't believe my own eyes. I don't want to use the term werewolf. That sounds so ludicrous. And I know for sure this wasn't some prankster wearing a costume, trying to convince people he was scary. This was some upright walking dog, I guess. Since that's pretty much what it looked like. Yeah, it was freaky. Scared the hell out of me and my sister. My sister and I both just kind of held each other after that, shortly after it walked away. We did our best to try and fall asleep, and at some point we did. The next morning, my parents awoke, asked us how we slept, and we both agreed and said everything was fine. We never told our parents. Even still to this day, they don't know what happened. After that morning, we drove to the next camp spot. That is hands down the only out of the ordinary experience I've ever had in my entire life. Not my story, but actually my husband's. He's not too good at writing, so he told me this story multiple times and sat down with me as I wrote it out for him. Now, this was back in 2014, and my husband is quite the fisherman. Not so much anymore with the whole pandemic, but he used to go out all the time, when he could. My husband at this point in time was fishing down out of New Orleans. He has extended family down there, and so he uses that as an excuse to fish. Well, he tells me he was fishing at this lake, and he kept getting this sensation that someone or something was watching him. After ignoring it for quite some time, maybe 30 to 40 minutes, he finally got sick of it, started looking around for the source of these feelings, went off to his left, maybe no more than 100 yards away, right in the tree line, was this large black figure. My husband claimed it had to have easily been around 9 feet tall and was massively wide, like the size of a linebacker on steroids. My husband got so terrified, he packed up right then and there, and just left without saying anything. Now, he's not exactly sure what the figure was, but has tried to convince me over and over again, there's no way this could have been a person. It was far too big and far too bulky, even though due to the daytime and where the sun was in the shade, you couldn't see much details, but the silhouette of whatever this thing was was pretty clear, and he could tell that it was humongous. 
Who knows how long this thing had been sitting there at the tree line, watching my husband fish. It kind of gave me the creeps when he told me about it, especially considering my husband isn't a storyteller. Sure, he'll tell stories of his fishing stuff, but not like this. He was genuinely scared when he got back from his trip and began to tell me what had happened. I guess when he told some of his extended family about what he saw, they were just like, yeah, those are called wood boogers. We have them all around here in the woods. You gotta watch out. Some of them aren't so friendly. So I'm guessing that what my husband possibly encountered was a Bigfoot. We're a couple that has never paid any mind or interest in that whole field of Bigfoot or Sasquatch, whatever you call it. So it's completely new territory for both of us. While I'm still skeptical, to say the least, my husband sure is a believer that that is what he saw, since he ruled out that there's no way at all it could have been a human, unless humans somehow get to around four to 500 pounds and nine feet tall. Oh, I also want to add this. The spot at which he was fishing is pretty isolated. He said that there's no reason there should have been anybody else out there. To get out there, it's quite a drive and a lot of brush and wilderness around is very thick, also very dangerous. The figure, even though it was technically at the other side of the lake, the portion of the lake he was at had a very short distance to the other side. Which means that whatever this figure was, had to have been and had to have come from a deeper portion of the woods, further into the swampy wilderness. All of these things just add up. And again, while I'm not 100% convinced this was the work of a Bigfoot, it's certainly disturbing to say the least. Camping with my family back in 2016, we had something very strange happen to us. No, we didn't see anything extravagant. Nothing crazy. It's more so what happened the following morning after we had slept. So the family and I were in an RV and parked just along offside a older road. The pull-off being just barely big enough to hold our entire 30-foot RV. The area around us was very dense in foliage. This was in the summertime, so everything normally is very overgrown, very thick, very dense. We were on our way to... I can't remember the camp spot, but one of the camp spots we visited. Sometimes in the summer, we would kind of route around to different camp spots, spend a day or two here, move to the next one, spend a day or two there, move to the next one. This was kind of our thing, and we did this often. And because of this, we had gone to so many, so that's why I can't exactly remember. And a lot of times, we would go the more scenic route, I don't know why, but it would take longer, but my dad enjoyed the views of the back roads versus the busy highways and interstates. So we turn off onto this pull-off, turn the car off, or I should say the RV, and everybody gets ready for bed. Everybody crashes out, everything is good. We wake up the next morning, and my dad steps outside to have a cigarette. When we all start to hear him flip out, now, we're all kind of frightened because we have no idea why he could be so scared. So we go outside, and he's kind of half terrified, half pissed. On the back side of the RV were these massive dents in the side. It looked like something big, like a silverback gorilla, had punched dents all along the back and the side of the RV. We were kind of all in shock and awe wondering what happened. We had just refueled the evening before, and these weren't here. Nobody hit us. We had been driving. So where did these massive dents come from? Did they come from something or someone overnight? And if so, how did we not wake up to them? These are questions all of us asked each other, wondering, are we going crazy? Have these been here all along, and we just never happened to see them. 
I guess one of these dents must have interfered with something mechanical of the RV, because my dad was saying the RV was having a hard time starting, which doesn't really make much sense to me because, well, I'm not a mechanic, but I think the engine's up front, so I'm not quite sure how these massive dents in the back would have anything to do with the mechanical side of the RV not starting. We were stuck there for a little while. Fortunately, my father had service and had to get a mechanic that dealt specifically with RVs. It was quite the wait, so we kind of hung outside for a while, hung back in the RV, and back and forth. But at some point or another, hanging outside just began to feel uncomfortable. Not only because it was so desolate, but because, I don't know, I feel like we were being watched. That might be really cliche to say, but I kept having these feelings like from the movie Deliverance, like there were some psycho-cannibalistic hillbillies watching us. That's probably completely wrong, but either way, I began to feel really uncomfortable outside. That feeling of being watched just wouldn't go away. Although I looked multiple times, and I never saw anybody or anything. In fact, I don't think we ever saw another soul on that road the entire time we were there, nor did we ever hear a car go by. Eventually, about noon or 1 p.m., the mechanic showed up, we got things taken care of, although I don't know what happened, but that's irrelevant. The RV started again, and we were all good to go, and we got out of there. Now, as far as the massive dents go, it looked like the Hulk had punched about four or five really big dents in the back of the RV and on the side. My question is again though, how did that happen without anybody not waking up? The amount of force that would take and the sound it would create would be massive. Maybe you could help me solve this one. I have a pretty crazy story for you. This was when I was 12 years old, so back about 2005. I was with a good friend of mine, and we were both about 12, 13. This was also in the state of Mississippi. We had walked off the trail where we were at. This was a campground. But instead of following the hiking trails like our parents told us to do, we decided to be 12 and 13, and respectively, walked quite a bit of ways away, and actually got lost. We walked for probably about two miles if I had to guess. We were both very athletic, and our families often camped together, hiking all the time, so a mile or two here and there was really nothing to us. Not like most kids nowadays, who are so glued into their damn phones, they can't even be bothered to walk 300 feet without being winded. We were pretty well versed in the outdoors too, since, again, our families and parents were nature buffs, but we were not experienced woodsmen not by any stretch of the means. We were still just young boys. And what we found this day still really disturbs me. In fact, there's many nights I have nightmares about it, just because it's so gross. So I want to say at this point, we were probably only about a half mile off the trail, but we didn't realize that. We were walking in a direction that we thought was away from the trail, but really was more so paralleling the trail, closer to a 90 degree angle. And at some point or another, my friend and I came across this old outhouse. Not like a honey bucket. This was like an old wooden outhouse. You could tell it used to be here for something. There was even kind of an old etched dirt path all around it, leading off, but, but with all the overgrowth, it doesn't look like it had been in use in quite some time. Now, what I assume from finding this is that this outhouse used to be in use long, long, long ago. But at some point, as they developed the park more and made more changes, they probably, instead of tearing it down, just let it be and kind of let nature take its course and overgrow the original path. That's what it looked like. It looked to be a pretty old outhouse. I mean, if I had to guess, maybe the 60s or 70s. It hadn't been used in quite some time. But as we saw it, and we started walking near it, 
we got a whiff of this awful smell. If you've ever smelt roadkill, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's just this putrid, rotting meat, hot garbage smell. And then we could hear the flies buzzing. So we assumed there was a dead animal nearby, or maybe somebody had taken a large crap in this outhouse. Maybe somebody else is using it, or they got lost. But being 12 and 13, we kind of dared each other to go check out the bathroom. Just in case. Because that's where the smell seemed to be coming from. After enough you go first, and you go first, we both decided to slowly approach the outhouse. When I touched the door handle, the door just kind of slid open. There was no lock on it or anything. And as soon as the door slowly opened, we both screamed and ran. Sitting in the outhouse was a body. Not just a body, but just a torso. The legs, arms, and head had been completely severed from the body, and there were no clothes. It was a male. It was just lying there. Not so much covered in blood, but it seemed to be somewhat fresh. Probably within the last 48 hours, I would imagine. It's not like my friend and I sat there, observing all the murder details and looking at it, the way CSI or a coroner would. We opened the door, saw that it was clearly a real severed torso, and we ran. And we ran, and we ran some more. And eventually, we broke into camp. We were more thankful that we could find people than we were to realize we were not lost. We ran to the nearest ranger we could find, or whoever works at these parks. We told them exactly what had happened and what we saw. Within hours, police were involved and they had the entire area taped off. They were asking us questions, but very minimal, like the condition in which we found it in, what we were doing, those kinds of things. We never got any concrete answers and, you know, we were just kids. I didn't expect us to. All I can assume is that somebody had probably murdered somebody and stuck their torso in this old outhouse, which would explain the smell. Now, whatever said person did with the head, arms and legs, that I don't want to know about. But the fact that there was a murderer, a serial killer probably nearby us the whole time we camped, that disturbs me more than what my friend and I found. My friend and I don't really talk about it much to this day. In fact, we don't really talk a whole lot anymore at all. Not because of what happened, but just because of life and the pandemic and you kind of just go your own separate ways. But we still do talk from time to time. The last time we talked about it was probably two years ago. We still have no idea who did this or what, but are both convinced there was a serial murderer out there. And maybe... Just maybe, we could have been next. The most disturbing thing to have happen to me was probably when I was camping with my friend, out in the woods in his backyard. I guess you can call it his backyard. But at the very edge of him and his parents' yard was just miles and miles of forest. I guess it was more like undeveloped land, actually. I don't know any of the specifics, like how many acres it covered, or how many miles it went back. We were both 14, 15 at the time. We were hanging out basically doing nothing. It was a Saturday afternoon, and we both decided to get creative and go maybe camp out in the woods, because why not? It was the summertime after all. I told him that that sounded like a pretty fun idea. So, after making sure his parents knew what we were going to do, we grabbed backpacks, stuffed them full of food and water, and ventured off into the woods. We were not experienced at all, but that didn't matter. Our mission, our goal, was to have a blast. We didn't actually make it that far into his backyard, or the backwoods, I guess you can call it. Maybe probably 20 minutes, if I had to guess. It was probably closer to 15. But it was super creepy too. He kept making Blair Witch Project references the whole time. It didn't help set the mood at all. And I wish I didn't have to deal with that. Those movies never made me want to go camping ever. They seriously freaked me out. I guess we walked around now for about another hour, 
before we finally found a clearing and began setting up camp. It was now beginning to get dark. The whole process of us deciding we wanted to go camping, telling his parents, getting our backpacks and all the food and water, and actually making it out to the spot was several hours, just to set that clear. We set up the single tent to make sure everything was easy and good to go. And I think after a while we just sat around, telling stories and laughing, just having a good time. Because we were surrounded by dark, I think Jason, my friend, and I fell asleep pretty quickly. Now, sometime in the middle of the night, we didn't have a phone or any way to keep track of time, so I'm assuming it was in the middle of the night. We heard, and we both awoke to this, what sounded like some large animal right around our tent. I know that we don't have bears around here, but whatever it was sounded exceptionally heavy. Now, I was scared. I refused to get up, but I had a feeling that whatever it was, it knew we were in the tent. We didn't have bears, and we could hear it sniffing around. It sounded like a muskox or something. Even if this was just our imagination, it was terrifying. Jason shot up, grabbed his flashlight, and hit it as loudly as he could against the floor, then turned on the light in the direction that we heard this thing. As soon as that happened, this massively loud rustling happened, and without warning, whatever this thing was began screaming this horrible howl, as if it had been splashed with holy water. It had to have only been about five feet outside of our tent, and then we hear it running off, tearing into the woods. You could hear it running and crashing through brush, screaming for quite some time. That was more than enough of a hint. We jumped out of our tent, with our shoes barely on, and left mostly everything, except for our flashlights, booking it back to his house. Safe to say, I never went camping again after that. Just that event alone made me too scared to go back in and find out what it was. Obviously, we're lucky it didn't follow us, but his parents never found out that we came back and crashed on his couch instead. I remember leaving the next day and I think at some point he had to go back by himself and fetch the tent and the supplies since they were his dad's. I never heard from him if anything happened after that. Still creepy as heck though. Sometimes the scariest things don't have to be full of bells and whistles. In fact, that's what happened and it should have been impossible. There is no reason or plausible explanation, no matter how hard you look at it. A few years ago, I went hiking with my girlfriend, Casey, and we got caught in a storm. We are used to wind and rain, but this was unreal, completely unexpected. We made the decision to carry on and to try to find somewhere to find shelter and stay until the storm had passed. We were real deep into the forest. We were worried if we didn't find somewhere safe, we might be injured. As luck would have it, we stumbled across an old hut. It looked like maybe something hunters used, an old deer blind perhaps, but it was shelter, and that was what we needed. We've hiked and camped through all sorts before, but this was another level. The wind and rain battered against the sides of the hut, and as we huddled together for warmth, Thankful that although the place was empty, it didn't seem as if it was used much. It was at least intact. I say hut, but this was a very crude makeshift shelter. There was no way of getting warm. We didn't have a change of clothes, but at least we weren't getting any more wet. Thankfully, we had flashlights, so at least we weren't in total darkness. The inside of the blind was pretty clean. It seemed whoever had used it at least tidied up after themselves. And at some point, as we began to dry out a little, the night drew, and we both began to drift off. I woke around 4 a.m. with a very stiff neck. I attempted to change positions and stretch a little. I woke Casey, who of course grumbled at me. 
it seemed the storm was coming towards an end. The wind certainly had eased. We both stood up, stretching our legs, attempting to shake out some of the cricks, when we heard a noise that terrified the both of us. Not a howl or a gunshot, a scream or anything cliché like that, but just as utterly shocking. There was a knocking, a three-rap, knock, 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 very precise and clear. We had seen nobody on the trail, no sign of any sort of life as we hiked. It was pitch black outside, and although the storm had thankfully dissipated, we could still hear the rain drumming down on the roof, although softly. We stared at one another for a moment and then both, in unison, called out hello. We waited, but there was nothing. We looked at each other again, Casey now shaking her head, but I had to know. I grabbed a flashlight and opened the door, only to be greeted by nothing. We didn't sleep any more that night. We simply waited for the sun to rise, then hightailed it out of there. Only before we left, I had a quick look around. Now, I'm a hiker and a camper, not a hunter, not a tracker. I couldn't see any signs of anything having been there, other than us. Our muddy footprints led up to the blind, nothing else. There were no obvious animal tracks, although I don't know what kind of animal is able to politely and precisely rap on a door like that. We headed back through the trail to the truck, never saw anyone else are still being the only vehicle in the lot. We'll never know who or what knocked on that door. Maybe that's for the best. I remember this one time when I was going through one of those extreme endurance type phases where I would go off for days and hikes on trails and often ending up deep in the middle of huge parks and forests, way off grid. I always went alone. I had a higher powered job that caused me no end of stress, and I saw those adventures as not only good for my body, after being chained up to my desk, but also good for my mind. On this particular trip, I was planning on being out for three days. I was about halfway through day one, deciding on the map how much further to go before finding somewhere else to make camp. The woods here were really dense trees as far as the eye could see, so really any available clearing would do, or I would be looking at sleeping in some branches. Just as I was looking around, I heard a familiar voice say hello. At first, I thought I must be imagining it, although the trails I used aren't exactly out of bounds. They tend to be more off the beaten track, and therefore, it is far more unlikely that I bump into another human which is just the way I like it when I'm decompressing. I turn around and see this guy, just a totally regular dude, dressed in a similar fashion, comparable in heightened structure even. Mind if I join you for a bit, he had asked. I did mind, but figured there couldn't be any harm in it. We'd plow on for a while, and then once I found him somewhere suitable, I'd bid him farewell and set up camp alone. I was there to unwind and not make a buddy. He'd made some small talk and I mumbled some replies, picking up speed and hoping he'd get the hint. There wasn't really much of a path, and soon it became one person wide, so I went ahead, he following behind, still muttering occasionally. I'm not honestly sure when I noticed that he was no longer there. We'd been on the straight and narrow, a single person track for quite some time. So when I turned around, even if he was no longer right behind me, which he wasn't, I should have been able to see him still in the track. Nothing. I called out, realizing I didn't even know his name, but shouting, Hey, you okay? No answer. Just silence. That's when I actually realized just how quiet it had gotten. There wasn't any wind, any animal chitter, nothing. I called out again, nothing. I walked back a ways, 
looking down at the trail, seeing only my boot prints. Weird thing was, I ended up going back real far, sweeping from side to side, seeing if there was any trace of him whatsoever. Even when I got back onto the wider path, where we had walked more or less side by side, there were only my prints. I mean, he had literally disappeared without a trace. I know that hikers go missing on trails often. Whether they got lost and die of starvation, injured and bleed out, or possibly attacked by a wild animal. Maybe sometimes they don't know they're dead. Yeah, it sounds crazy to me, but what else could that guy have been? Disappearing like that and leaving no footprints. Was this the ghost of a hiker? Next time you're watching one of those true crime type shows on Netflix, and you scoff and think that can never happen to me, just sit there for a moment. Think about my story. This occurred back in 2019, whilst I was out hunting boar. I had headed out really early since they tend to be pretty active in the early morning hours. It was a place I'd been to many times before, not just for a few years. Nothing much seemed to have changed though, as was to be expected. Normally, I feel a sense of peace when I'm out there. Excitement too, as the adrenaline of the hunt kicks in. But also, I find being in the woods relaxing. A sense of being one with nature, being top of the food chain. I don't tend to mess with the big guys like stags or bears, but a good-sized boar makes me feel powerful and it makes a darn fine casserole. That day, however, I definitely felt on edge, like I wasn't fully alone, that someone was watching me. Now, that can obviously be explained by all the eyes on you from the creatures, even if you are hiding from one you want to kill. There will be others watching, but I knew that feeling, and this wasn't like that. I even called out a couple of times, risking to give myself away to the pigs, but feeling that if somebody was dumb enough to just be taking their dog for a walk in this secluded area known for hunting, then I should at least warn them. I didn't want to be facing any charges or the police if I shot somebody. It turns out, I would end up be talking to the local sheriff anyway. You see, not long after, I had convinced myself I was just being a wuss and there was nobody out here except me, my gun, and my future victims. Very serial killer, I know. But then I heard a scream. A very human, high-pitched female scream. Just as I was whipping around to see if I could get a sense of where it might have come from, there was one singular gunshot. It sounded like it had come from a shotgun. Silence followed suit. I stood stock still my own shotgun locked and loaded, ready to shoot first and ask questions later if anybody came running out of the trees. I must have just stood there waiting for around 30 minutes, or felt like that long, before I finally decided it was safe enough to run to my truck and get out of Dodge. Now, I have heard a lot of animal noises and am aware of coyotes, bobcats, foxes. They can all sound like a lady being murdered especially during mating season. But this is boar and deer and rabbit and woodchuck territory. Feeling I needed to do the right thing, I reported it to the sheriff, who I kind of expected to look at me as if I'd been on the beers or smoking something I probably shouldn't have. Instead, he went kind of pale, asked me to show him exactly where I'd been on a map and was on the phone before I'd even left his office turns out there had actually been an active serial killer in the area, kidnapping, murdering, raping, torturing, and other heinous things to young women. They'd been on the verge of warning people and forcing a nighttime curfew, but hadn't quite gotten there. They found the woman I'd heard scream that afternoon, and by evening, the town was on lockdown. I had to go back to the sheriff to make my statement. Afterwards, he filled me in on a little bit more information. The Deep Woods Killer, as they name him, so far had five victims, the fifth being that woman I heard. 
one, two, three, and four had a pattern. He kidnapped this girl, took her somewhere where they might encounter just one other person. Always in the woods near somewhere he typically spends time. The woman would scream. He'd kill her, hunt and fish, would come to see what happened, and then kill them too. It suddenly dawned on me what that meant. I probably should have been victim number six. I was meant to run towards the noise, wanting to help this damsel in distress, but instead I froze in my cowardice. I could have saved her life. I watched the news and did a ton of internet research, looking for cases, but I never saw anything. My guess is that they wrapped it up and hid it. From what I was told, and from what I understand, there are many serial killer cases that we will never know about, because they are covered up so quickly. A lot of it, due to the incompetence and covering up mistakes of local PDs, because they didn't react fast enough where lives could have been saved. They covered up to save their own butt. Still, makes you wonder just how many serial killers are out there. I had just thrown another log onto the fire, and my friend had gone quiet. We both noticed we were not alone. A hush fell over us as we looked around, wondering what it could be. We noticed a figure in the dark on our right side, and just then, my friend yelled out. We didn't realize it until later that we had even seen something move from behind us to our left too. But for now, we thought that maybe whatever it was might have been coming closer. The fire in front of us flickered a bright orange and yellow all across the trees while the night sky above us threw down only stars and darkness. We sat there for what seemed like three hours, waiting for something to happen, when suddenly, my friend stood up and pointing into the air, shouting, What is that? Pointing at a tall black shadow between the trees close by, I stood up slowly and tried to imagine what it could possibly be. What innocent and plausible explanation I could think of. This wasn't as terrifying as it seemed. But as the figure came closer, I knew there was nothing innocent about it. There was no logical and obvious reasons for it being there. Looking back, the best way I can describe it would be that it looked like one of those inflatable balloon people, those giant long thin people that stretched out arms and legs. Only, while those seemed to be fun and inviting, this long outstretched shadow person, or whatever it was, seemed to literally ooze with evil intent. I, Crab walked backwards, desperately wanting to get my feet and run, but my body refusing to do so as I asked. I'm not afraid to say I was completely petrified. My buddy was luckier, and once the thing had started moving, so had he, and I heard the roar of an engine and understood he made it to the truck, knowing that I might end up stranded here with this thing. That alone gave me the boost I needed to get my feet, but for a moment, I was still frozen to the spot, standing but unable to run, and that was when it moved faster than it should have been possible and was right in front of me within seconds. All I could think and feel was that I was going to die. I was so cold, and there was this awful stink. I could hardly breathe, and when I had made myself open on my eyes, since I had practically screwed them shut tight with fear, I realized the dark mass was see-through, and I could make out the fire behind and through it. I don't know what would have happened then if my buddy hadn't have blasted the truck horn, but it snapped me out of whatever trance I was in, and I ran faster than I ever had before, going towards the beams from the headlamps of the truck. We got out of there, and didn't even bother to return for our stuff. We had been hiking for days at this point, and after running from that thing, we were exhausted. We came into a small clearing, 
just sitting there for a while. We could have stared at the tall trees that surrounded us forever if we didn't hear something in the woods growling at us. It was long and low, and animal-like. We were still catching our breath when it started again. Louder, and closer this time. Whatever made that sound had been watching us for some time. Who knows how much longer it would stay unseen. I threw on my pack quickly, and my friend already, having his arm ready to go from taking a quick break. When he turned around to see me struggling with mine, he quickly offered to take most of it off me, which I gladly accepted without hesitation. I grabbed the knife out of my pocket and slowly stood at the ready, in case this thing would come back for us. We weren't amateurs or city boys looking for adventure, ending up well out at our death. We had been hiking, camping, hunting, you name it, for years. We were what you would call experienced. Therefore, we knew this wasn't a bear, or a cougar, or some sort of regular mountain animal. This thing was tracking us, using stealth and smarts like a human, except for the speed and agility that it seemed to be using to follow us and remain so far unseen. And that growl, up until then, we heard only it moving through the trees and the quick, heavy breathing, or more like panting. Hearing that low, guttural growl now made my blood run cold. It was angry. That was the kind of noise my dog made when it felt threatened. God, I wished right then that we would have brought the dogs with us. Right at that moment, stood back to back, me with a knife and my friend, a large stick he'd found lying on the ground. We were so completely exhausted, we barely had any energy left to put up a fight. The thing made a noise again. This time, however, rather than a low growl, it was more like a howl, telling us it was ready to make a move. And sure enough, the trees and long grass where it was hiding started shaking and I made a split-second decision to throw the knife in that direction, like I was some sort of circus performer knife-thrower. Whatever gods were on our side right then must have believed in us enough. I hit the mark, and we heard a high-pitched scream of what seemed to be pain. Before I had a chance to recover, we ran. We ran faster than ever before, somehow pushing through the exhaustion, I think pure fear giving us the adrenaline we needed for energy, and we made it back to base camp. One of our friends did not believe us, thought we were being dramatic and making stuff up. So we went back and followed the trail. We refused to join him. When he saw him again a few days later, he changed his mind. He'd found my knife on the ground and a large area of dried blood and some pure white hair. Not fur, but hair. Safe to say, we haven't been back there since. I swear, I saw some sort of dark apparition in the woods. I'll tell you about it. I was walking home from a night out with some friends. My house is roughly a 25-minute walk through deep woods at the end of my street. I was at a point where... I had about 10 minutes left, so I figured I would speed up a little bit and see if I can make it home in 15, since I enjoy going on long walks anyway. It was almost midnight, so there really wasn't anybody else outside but me and the occasional night dog walker. When I got about halfway through the woods, which is where this weird feeling began creeping over me, I ended up running most of the way back to my house. Once I made it to the last street before my own, suddenly everything felt eerie quiet, except for crickets chirping randomly here and there. Something was following me, and it was in the wood line. It was almost pitch black. There was very little light coming from the moon, and almost no street lamps, until you got closer to the houses. My cell was almost dead, 
and had gone into battery saving mode. So, although I had the light app on, it was practically useless. You know that feeling you get sometimes, where you are sure you are being followed, and when you finally get the courage to spin around, there is just another random person heading back from the store or listening to music, completely oblivious to any anxiety they might have caused you. I had that feeling now, but tenfold. I couldn't think of any innocent reason to find someone trailing behind me, minding their own business at midnight in the dark. Every single Hollywood horror movie cliché seemed to apply. It suddenly got super cold. It was almost silent when there should have been all sorts of critters about. And the very second I finally willed myself to turn around, my phone died completely. If this had been Halloween Part 75 or however many there are, I would have been a goner for sure. No, I didn't see Michael Myers when I turned, but there was something there. It was hard to see, of course, since there was almost no light. But yet, I could clearly make out a solid, dark mass. Something. Something far bigger than a person. And also appeared to be floating. I stood there, rooted to this spot for what seemed like an eternity. But judging by the time on my watch, when I finally got home, must have only been a few seconds. I watched in absolute dread as this mass seemed to get bigger. Then something in my brain just yelled, run, and I did. I can't tell you what it was, as I have no idea, but whatever I saw that night, it wasn't right. It should not have been there. It wasn't natural, and it sure as hell wasn't there to make friends with me. I know monsters exist. I saw one myself one day while out helping my father who was felling a tree. I was watching from a distance, and in one moment of inattention, I saw something appear on the side of a tree opposite of me. It was not a human figure, but its shape suggested it might be humanoid. Anyway. As soon as I noticed this thing, it lunged towards my father. For clarification, this happened around 10 years ago. My dad has always been a big guy, really strong, and I was a skinny kid, around 12 or 13. Although, I was used to helping out. My father had told me to take a step back, as he worked on a particular part of the tree. At this point, we were a bit further into the woods than we would usually have been, on account of there having been a storm and a lot of trees that had been damaged. Dad wanted this particular wood to work on, so we'd gone further in to make sure we found just what he was needing. Being in Pennsylvania, there are also a lot of caves and caverns out here in the woods, as well as huge expanses of trees. I know better than to mess around down there, know that I ever thought of anything weird might happen, but I've also seen what a nasty snake or spider bite can do. I've heard rumors of there being huge drops in the caves, and no way of pulling yourself back out. That was the closest I'd ever been to them for years, and I wonder now, looking back, if the thing I saw maybe lived down there. What made it come out and go after my dad, I have no idea. Maybe that tree meant something. Maybe the sound awoke it. After, when father was recovered, although we never told no one else, and we never went back down that far, he said he thought maybe the tree was marking a grave or something. This thing was territorial. Anyway, I was just standing there when this thing screeched and appeared to slash at my father, using its arm and what looked like these long claws, so sharp, they cut straight through his shirt, tearing his arm open. He was successful in managing to swing back at it with an axe in his other hand, and whatever this thing was, met with axe. It screeched much louder and ran off. Well, I say ran, but 
it sort of skittered about, like a giant spider that was pale and humanoid, and on two legs. It would be really hard for me to tell you exactly what it looked like. It was tall, but no more taller than my father. Really pale, almost like an albino. Completely hairless, having very long arms and legs. The head was almost featureless. Large black eyes. No nose or really much of a mouth that I could see. Just holes. We ran like hell back to the house. Cleaned up my dad's arm. He didn't want to go to the doctor, I mean, what would we tell them happened? It took ages for those gashes to heal, and he had an awful fever for days following. So, he just slept for hours. So yeah, I know for sure there are monsters out there. And if something like this exists, just what else is lurking about in the forests? Back in the spring of 2018, I was camping with my friends at a lake in the Adirondack Mountains. Me and two buddies took sleeping bags out towards the deep woods, looking for a good place to sleep. We wanted to be far enough away from other campers, but not so far that we would have to walk all night long in order to get back before breakfast. It was getting late, and we weren't exactly sure where we were going. So, we stopped and decided to pitch our tent by an old tree stump. I thought that I saw a silhouette of something staring at me through the darkness, but when I looked again, it was gone. There are no bears or wolves out here, according to my prior knowledge, so I couldn't think of what else it could have been staring at us like what I saw. The wind shifted, bringing with it a wave of the most awful stench I have ever tasted. I used to spend a lot of my time helping my uncle on his ranch, where awful smells were a part of his daily routine. So, it wasn't like I was really a soft city boy that had never gotten a whiff of any of the foulness that nature can truly serve. And that was just as... There was something unnatural about the odor. Not just in its potency, but okay... It smelled evil. I couldn't spell it out for you what evil smells like, but I just knew in that moment. The smell lasted less for than half a breath, and then, like the creature I'd seen, it was gone. I tried to tell my buddies that I thought there was something out there with us. Not only were they not impressed, they were irritated, thinking that I was trying to scare them. I got irritated just the same. We had words and we spent a stretch of time not speaking to each other, just setting up our sleeping gear. I got barked at several times for not being much help getting things ready. I kept gazing all around us. I was on high alert and I didn't know how to turn it off. I couldn't bring my eyes down to my hands to perform menial tasks. My buddies told me to drop the childish game that I was never going to really scare them. Words, at least convincing words, failed me. We all went to bed mad at each other. The anger distracted me for a short while, just long enough that when I heard sounds outside the tent, I was surprised. I held my breath for so long that it's a wonder I didn't pass out. It was as if I knew, down on a cellular level, that if I allowed one more breath in, were out. We were dead. I listened to the footsteps outside. They didn't seem concerned with masking their presence. Twigs snapped, leaves crunched, and most troubling of all, I heard snorts. Have you ever heard a dog snort so hard that it almost sounds like a bark? That's pretty close to what I was hearing. And my friends were either sleeping through it, or they were frozen solid as I was. Just as I thought the thing out there was going to leave, I'd hear it come back again. It slowly dawned on me that it was circling us, slowly and deliberately. I wondered if it was pacing. Then it hit me. What if the guys were trying to scare me? Desperation drove me to consider how far either of them would go to get somebody to trail us 
while we were camping, and make an all-night affair of psyching me out. My fear was slowly turning into anger, just enough to allow me to breathe and reach for the zipper of the tent. I was going to find out what was really going on. My heartbeat knocked me back down as the zipper opened, blasted me with the stench of evil from before. It was the briefest perception, but it shook me, made me pause and ask myself if I was really up to finding out what was making the noises and the stink. I pushed my way outside the tent with my ribs rattling from my own heartbeat. There was a full moon with patches of clouds that winked. That awful evil smell came to me in snatches as the breeze stirred and couldn't exactly make up its mind which direction it was going to blow from. Did I really step outside my tent without my flashlight? I did, and I didn't want to fetch it for fear I'd have knives or claws in my back the instant I turned. I looked in the general direction that I thought I heard the last few footfalls. I saw nothing, but I swear that just as I had smelled evil, I could feel something looking at me. The moon unveiled briefly. It struggled to trace the outline of something standing about 30 paces away from me. The thing was so dark that it was nearly invisible, save for the glint of moonlight finding its edges. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in the devil, demons, angels, or anything else. But the thing that the moon was trying to show me was enough to turn me religious for just a moment. Four curved horns jutted from this thing's head. The head was goatish, but not without human features. It had two long ears and twitching. It was when it bared its teeth that I thought I saw one of its earlobes had something hanging. It could have just been a bit of matted fur, but it got to me for the moment. There I was, facing something that was not only anything unlike I'd ever seen, but there were those little details that it could have been intelligent. My brain transformed the bared teeth into a smile. It was indeed taunting me. I couldn't handle it any longer. I yelled. I wanted to yell words, but amorphous howls were all I could manage. The raw evil radiating from the thing reduced me to basic instincts. It ran away on two legs, a strong bounce in its gait, but the backbone of the thing moved its torso with serpentine reptilian movement. My friends found me screaming. They also found that I had messed myself. They wanted to laugh, but the implications held them back. They knew that I wouldn't have gone that far just to prop up a prank. Our relationship shortly thinned after that. The creature may have not done us any bodily harm, but something about it lingered that tainted our friendship. Our unbreakable bond became cracked and was never the same again after we encountered what I believe was the Goat Man. Me and my two best friends were out for a camping trip out in the deep woods. We'd been going to the same place now since we were very young, and it's not exactly new ground. So me, age 26, Ben, 27, and Chris, 29, all of us are close to 30 now, decided to make this our one last trip before we all let our childhood innocence go. You know, I kind of regret that decision, but I guess none of us thought we'd ever have a good memory to replace it with after this happened. Keep in mind, here these guys are my best friends, and brothers in all but blood, but if something happened to them, I'd protect them with everything I am. I guess you could say that I found out everything I'm not. Much of our camping was a little ritual of remarking at how small everything had gotten since we were kids. The towering cliff was just now a large rock. That dramatic waterfall was now just a sharp slope where the creek ran down. All of these were things we remarked at every single time we camped there. It was like a museum of relics from a time gone by, and we cherished each one. There was only one thing that we weren't so fond of. There was a hole in the hillside that was big enough to be a rabbit's warren 
when we were kids. It was the one thing that seemed to have gotten bigger as we got bigger. Wow, that's still there, is the most any of us would ever say about it. And most of the time, we pretended it wasn't there. Chris was the one that questioned our apprehension out loud. He asked us why we never really would look at it, or what was down in the old hole. Only after ever hearing him raise the matter did it seem so childish and ridiculous, and being so intimidated by a simple hole in the earth. Each of us tried to articulate what it was that had kept us spellbound with fear over it. None of us could manage my explanation that made sense. I said that it just didn't feel right to look at it too long. I couldn't explain why I felt that way. Chris proposed that we camp with an eye shot of the hole, just so we could say that we overcame our fear. Looking back, I think I could tell that he really didn't like the sound of his own idea, as if there was something about that hole that bothered him so much, that he wasn't going to be at peace until he found a way to lay it to rest, and he was dressing that childhood fear up as some personal hurdle we could conquer together. None of us liked the idea, but we did it anyway, so we could be rid of the phantom fear. Night came, and there was a halo of silence and stillness that surrounded the hole and the area around it. Maybe I would have felt better if I had heard something moving around in there, but that absolute emptiness, stillness, that unknown that escaped us from childhood, was somehow more frightening than anything else. When there finally was a sound in the quiet, it wasn't coming from the hole. It was coming from Ben. I thought he was trying to creep me out. He stood outside the tent and started whistling some creepy little tune. It didn't help that we couldn't whistle very well. Then he was chuckling. I wanted to tell him that he was planning on doing something, that he was already giving himself away. But his footsteps and his whistling and chuckling faded. I can't even tell you why I bolted out of the tent in that moment, but I did. Somehow, I just knew. In the LED of my phone, I saw his scrambling into the hole as the best he could fit. I grabbed him one ankle and pulled him out. The look on his face is something I will see for the rest of my days. He didn't look horrified like he had seen a ghost or anything like that. He was smiling so hard that I thought his head would split in half. His eyes were wide, wide open, like his eyelids had been cut off. He couldn't live on his own anymore after that. He was placed in a mental health facility, where he would spend most of his time sitting down with that strained grin on his face. He wouldn't blink. Nurses even had to artificially moisten his eyes. And out of nowhere... He would have terrible fits. Nurses would be forced to restrain him. Of course, there was a rational explanation for all of it. He was that one in a million cases of young dementia. They were baffled as to how it became so pronounced without any warning signs. They certainly weren't going to buy into our story. Well, we didn't really have a story. We camped out near a hole we were all afraid of as we grew up. What did it do? Suck his soul out or something? I don't know. We never really sat down and analyzed it. But me and Chris knew that our campsite had more to do with Ben's condition than the doctor's test would ever reveal. We never went near that place ever again. And I have no idea what the hell is in that hole. I was living in a house with my two roommates at the time. I'd only been there for about a year. I really should have packed up my stuff and left, but I didn't know what else to do, as I could not afford to move out of state all by myself. So far, we never had any unusual experiences until this happened. My roommate would be gone to work all day Sunday through Wednesday, sometimes even through Thursdays. He worked from 3 p.m. till 11 p.m., seven-hour shifts. The other roommate also worked pretty much any shift he could get when he got from his regular job. But on one night, 
in both particular roommates. They were home sleeping together upstairs in their beds, while it was very stormy outside that night. Which, by the way, were also surrounded by thick, dense woods. So, the threat of having a large tree fall on us is very real. I made a habit of nervously eyeing the trees through every window of that rental. Sometimes, my roommates would make fun of me for walking around in a circle, going from room to room, craning my neck. They'd ask me what plan it was if a tree actually fell and I saw it coming. I would just tell them to shut up. But this particular storm that night, as I mentioned, was different. I felt like I couldn't see anything through the windows at night. No street lamps and no property lights of our own. If a tree was going to fall, I wouldn't be able to see it coming. I took some poor man's sleeping medicine, aka bourbon, and tried to go to sleep myself. I think I drifted off a couple of times, but the thunder sounded like it was just outside the walls, so I jumped at every single strike. Then I became aware of another sound. At first, I thought it was my ears cobbling together, phantom sounds from the chaos of the storm. But the longer I listened, the more certain I was hearing some kind of scraping just outside the wall. Now, my bed is shoved up into a corner, and if there hadn't been a wall in the way, the source of sound would have been poking me in the eye. Well, there wasn't a window there, so I couldn't see for sure what it was. My imagination had all kinds of ideas, mostly a tree leaning as far as it possibly could before the roots fully let go and this towering trunk crushed our house. But there was no great impact, just that constant sound. The power of the storm died down just enough for me to hear the scraping even more clearly. I was beginning to get used to it and ignore it when the sound started to move. I had one wide open eye, gazing into the dark as if I could see the sound where it trailed off to. It went over to a part of the wall where my roommates were sleeping. They had windows. I did not. I was curious for my own good. Tree branches don't move like that. I made my way over to their bedroom as quietly as I could, aimed my phone's flashlight out the window before turning it on. It took half a second for what I saw to register. I was on the floor. My brain's first response was, how come I could see the face of this thing all the way up here? My rational sigh took hold of me and told me that the creature was just tall, allowing its face to be seen on the second story. It was almost funny with the way the water had matted its shaggy hair, making it look like a drowned rat. But there was nothing funny about these burning orange eyes and the flaring ape-like nostrils and what appeared to be tusks protruding from its mouth. It was like some sort of disgusting gorilla-goat hybrid or something. It was simply a demon. It gingerly ran one long claw on one digit across the side of the house. Something like dumb curiosity in its eyes. My roommates tell me that I screamed and woke them up, ready to fight a war. They also say that I didn't respond for several minutes. I barely remember the experience. I just remember being more terrified than I ever had been in my entire life. I was with a friend on the road by my house, 4 a.m. in the morning. We were coming from a KFC. We drove by some houses not too far away, here in a small forested area. It has been quite recently that I've heard about this thing, but never have taken it as a big deal. But after what we saw, man, now I am so terrified of what's out there. I don't know whether to believe or not to believe. It has always been something interesting because whenever you see anything about Bigfoot on TV, people call them fake. Then, when they actually see one themselves, they either get killed or disappear for good. Trinidad, Texas, has its share of myths 
regarding these creatures known as Bigfoots here. I'm not entirely convinced they're just brute beasts. I've come to know of an Indian burial mound that hadn't been properly maintained or preserved. The wild simply overtook it, reclaiming it. Nobody knew what the area was until a number of Native American relics were found. The site also became the source of a number of tales. I've got one of my own to share. As soon as I heard about the place, I had to check it out for myself. I had hoped that I would be able to feel some sort of sacred energy. I didn't feel anything when I showed up. I thought it could have been a fluke. So, I went back the very next day. I did feel a slight down feeling, but I thought that was just me. So, I visited again. No sooner than I stepped onto whatever invisible boundary there was, my heart began to palpitate. My palms became sweaty. I basically felt like I was on the verge of a panic attack. And just like that, it was over with. I tried to will the feeling to return, but it had passed for good. It was so far out that I came back the day after that. I didn't get that overwhelming feeling again, but I saw a very tall and shaggy shape circling me behind the trees. The fur was that off-white color of a polar bear fur, but dirtier. It was to match every Bigfoot story I'd ever heard, minus the color of fur. The implications of a connection between the monster and where I was standing was far more terrifying than the beast itself. It didn't look at me like it was hungry. It looked at me like it was offended, as if trying to get through to me. I wasn't welcome. I didn't tempt fate. I did not come back after that. A few years ago, when I was about 17 or 18, a couple of friends and I were on our way to the beach for some fun and relaxation. We decided to take a different path to the beach through some deep, dense woods. We thought nothing of it, began walking down the path. As we continued to walk, my friends and I began hearing some very peculiar sounds in the distance. These were definitely not any sounds one would normally hear from animals. We didn't know what it was, but these were very scary sounds. The kind of sound that leaves you thinking twice about continuing onward down a certain path or trail through dark woods at nighttime. My friends and I cracked jokes at first, trying to make light of what we heard, as none of us knew for sure what made those terrifying noises. But eventually, our fear overtook our sense of humor, and we ultimately decided to turn back instead of proceeding on our way towards the beach. That's when the strangeness began to ramp up. The birds overhead were very active, but perfectly silent. Squirrels, chipmunks, and even raccoons sprinted around us as if they were evacuating the area. Even the crickets seemed to go quiet. The bizarre noises drew nearer, and I tried to pinpoint which direction they were coming from. It slowly dawned on me that the sounds were surrounding us. The sources had split up and closed around us. My friends must have realized the same thing. They became more agitated and were looking around like panicked animals. The police to this day doubt my story. I don't blame them. But a lack of sheer evidence seems to be the thin thread keeping me out of prison. Plus, the fact that one of the other people with us that day is now in a mental health facility. The sounds bayed and roared all around us until our nerves couldn't be any closer to the surface. A gigantic furry shape erupted from the concealing woods. You've seen the way gorillas run, right? Well, imagine a gorilla that walks and runs like a human being. A gorilla that's as tall as the surrounding trees. It didn't roar. It didn't really make any displays of aggression. It just acted swiftly. It ran toward us. We flinched, and it passed. And the one of us was gone. One of the girls. The tenor of the sounds changed to something like joy. Not that I'm an expert. Each time I look back on this incident, 
I strained to remember any sound of our friend that was snatched up, but I recall nothing. Surely she struggled or resisted just a little. Maybe she was so terrified that she fainted when she saw it coming at her, but it was on us so quickly. Investigators have found no blood, clothing, hair, or anything. It's as if she was never with us to begin. That was a possibility they considered. It's something that I try not to think about, as much as it resurfaces in my nightmares and when cryptid hunters want to chat with me. It was the summer of 2008. I was at my friend's house. We were having a campfire. We had been partying earlier in the day, but nobody had passed out yet from drinking too much alcohol. We were still up late, talking about our experiences with ghosts, aliens, Bigfoots, and other odd entities. Out of the blue, one of my friends mentioned he'd like to talk about his own encounter with a Bigfoot. Apparently, early in the year, around January or so, he and his girlfriend left out of town for a weekend camping trip. They thought it would be fun to take her pet dog along with them on their wonderful adventure. They arrived at their destination that night, after dark, so they set up their tent, pitched camp, went to bed. They woke up to the sound of a dog in distress. They had both gotten their heads out of the tent at the same time. His girlfriend passed out. He could not help but stare in horror at this monstrous ape-like creature that held the dog up in the air by one leg. Like a curious dumb child, it pulled the dog's legs off and the sound of wet tearing muscle was as awful as the screams that the dog let out. It was clear that he was not going to be able to save this dog, so he hungered down in the tent and waited. When the thing was gone, there was only blood. He didn't know if this creature ate this dog or what, but he stared at that blood for a long time, thinking that blood could have been him had he slept outside. I don't know if he's full of crap, but... He seemed pretty shaken up telling the story, like it really bothered him. He's not the type of person to make something up like this. Maybe there is more truth to his story than I realize. If so, that's incredibly disturbing, and I wish to stay far away from the woods he camped in. It was the summer of 2004. My brother, my cousin, and I were on a camping trip near an old farmhouse slash factory that has its own history. I had been there before with other people, so it wasn't anything new to me. The rest of our family went to go horseback riding, so the three of us decided to hang around the park with the forest, which was surprisingly deserted. I have to admit, it kind of was eerie how the park was so deserted. It was a hot summer's day, Fort Collins, Colorado, and there should have been a bunch of kids playing. But instead, it was just three, all aged between 15 to 17, as we were then. My mom had left us a cool bag with some ice cream, which had situated under a tree. Out of the sun, as we didn't want the lollies to melt. I walked over to get them, as we're all quenched for thirst and needed something cold and refreshing. As I walked over to this wooded area, I had the strangest feeling I was being watched. I've heard people talking of this sensation before, but no idea what it actually felt like. I could feel eyes on me, a cold stare that was tracing me up and down, left to right. I made a 360 turn to see who or what it was. My brother and cousin can sense something was wrong, so they ran over to me. They went deathly quiet, and I knew they too felt something stare. Look, my brother said, pointing in the distance, about 30 yards away. It was the strangest thing I had ever seen in my life. At first glance, it appeared to be a bear, which was grounds enough to be petrified. But this creature was no bear. It had the shape and form of a bear, but with brown fur. It appeared to be about 12 to 15 feet tall and came about halfway of some of the trees overhead. 
It had what appeared to be horns, which were strange things sticking out of its head. In fact, the horns almost seemed to kind of blend into the branches. It was kind of hard to differentiate between the two. This thing stood tall. I knew if it spotted us, we would be dead. But we were terrified by seeing this thing. Thankfully, one of us was thinking straight, and my cousin grabbed me and my brother by the necks, whispering, run. As if by force, we all began running, got into the park and hid under the tire swing, at least until our parents showed up. When we told them what happened, they didn't believe us, thought we were just trying to pull a prank. But 17 years later, I know what I saw. It was real and terrifying, and I can't get that image out of my head. I never will. Believe me if you want, but there is something mysterious and terrifying that dwells deep within the forest. Maybe it's a monster, maybe it's a demon, or maybe, perhaps, it's a guardian. I don't know. This was back in September of 2007. Back then, I was 21. At the time, I lived with my two roommates at the time in a small rented house right in town. The place had a huge backyard and stretched out open into a field and the forest line past our fence. Now, me and my friends had permission from all owners to go out there and hunt occasionally. Today, I'm a proud vegan, but back then, I didn't give two craps about any animals, so I hunted when I could. On one occasion, in September, myself and my buddy went hunting for some deer, whatever we could find. And dating apps were just new, so we wanted some cool pictures of ourselves with guns to impress the girls around here. I look back on it and I know, the thought is pretty cringy, but we were young. Whether or not we would find any deer was another issue. Even typing this sends shivers down my spine because ultimately, I recall the incident. My buddy had just went to go pee and I was sitting playing a game called Snake on my flip phone. I felt so bad with that phone. It's laughable now. My buddy was away for what seemed to be a long time, longer than it takes anybody to pee. I got worried. The next thing I heard was my buddy screaming in what sounded like agony. I ran in an effort to find him, and when I did, he was on the ground with a bloody wound on his leg. He was pointing to his right, and when I looked, I stopped dead at what was before me. It appeared to be a hyena-looking like creature, with this leathery red raw dripping bits of flesh from its mouth. It was disgusting looking. Its nose and face seemed to be smashed in, but it looked wrong in every sense of the way. The creature spotted me and began to run at the speed of lightning. As if by divine intervention, I managed to grab my gun, pulling the trigger, maiming this thing in the spinal cord which jutted out of its emaciated frame. It did not die, but it bled profusely and ran. I lifted my buddy up and dragged him along the forest floor until we got home. When we told the hospital what had happened, they didn't believe us, but we thought we were just some drugged up college kids. But we both know what happened and will never forget what happened on that day back in September of 2007. Since then, I've heard of people mentioning the phrase dogmen, but I don't know. I guess I have heard some reports of hyena-like creatures that are bipedal. And I guess if I think back on it, that could have been it. But I don't know. The idea of a dogman seems crazy, but so is what we saw. I guess I'll let you be the judge on this one. It was around 10 p.m. in the evening. The day had been cloudy and rainy, and it stayed that way for most of the night. Earlier that night, me and my girlfriend at the time were playing Super Mario Sunshine on our GameCube, until we began hearing heavy rainfall outside. Because of this, the both of us decided to go for a walk in the rain. I know it sounds weird, but this was in southern Spain, 
and we just don't get heavy showers that often. So we put on our raincoats and our wellies and got an umbrella. It looked quite romantic out, and it was still relatively bright as it was summer. My then girlfriend was wearing a white rain jacket as we left our house and headed to a local park. This was surrounded by the most gorgeous woodland. What was strange was that as we were walking, moths and flies kept flocking to my girlfriend and her rain jacket and her hair. She was getting very annoyed, ready to turn back home. But luckily, I had some anti-pest spray and tried my best to help. We kept walking, and as we walked into this woodland area, we stopped under a tree. We kissed. The kiss was short-lived, however, as we both heard a yelp and a growl and witnessed something terrifying. In what appeared to be a horse, which was strange-looking, mangy and disgusting, appeared to have what looked like rotting flesh, gray and pale, and a maniacal expression. This was like a horse from hell. I know it sounds ridiculous, but how else do I even describe it? I grabbed my girlfriend, keeping her from moving, and we both stood there behind the tree, shaking. I had actually ended up biting her, and she was bleeding. I wondered if this crazed thing could smell the blood. I felt terrified. Eventually, this thing backed away, but I knew it was circling around us, keeping watch of us. And we witnessed that it had appeared to kill a deer, which was lying maimed and decimated on the forest floor near us. We both briskly walked back home, sincerely regretted ever leaving the house. And not long after, we both kept fighting and blaming each other for going on the walk. We couldn't cope with the horror of what we had seen, and we both felt we were going crazy. We ended up going our separate ways. That was 19 years ago. I often think about the incident of Rosa and I to this day. I might try and reach out to her so we could both talk about it again. I feel we both need counseling as we witnessed something from hell. Something that destroyed our relationship and made us afraid of everything. I hope by submitting this story, I can find other people who may have witnessed similar events and experiences can maybe point me in the right direction. It is my hope that I can join some type of support group for people who have PTSD after seeing strange and terrifying creatures that society, the world, and everybody claims over and over that do not exist. At the age of 10, my family and I took a vacation down to Wilson's Creek National Battlefield in Missouri. Now, this was a pretty cool place for us. Most of the battlefield is covered by dense forest. We camped out of the park for two nights straight with very little rain. But it did start raining on our second night there. There is some light thunder and lightning. My parents were experienced at camping, so they didn't take much notice. But instead, they told us some ghost stories from the comforts of our tent. When the storm had calmed, my parents went back to their tent, left me and my younger brother in ours. My younger brother slept soundly very quickly, but I was still freaked out by the thunder and hoped it would not start again. I guess I wasn't a camping kid as I freaked out about any deers, bugs, bears, or anything finding its way to our camping site. I could even hear a rustling sound just outside of our tent, and my blood went cold. I felt nauseous, wanting to call out for my parents, but my voice could not leave my body. So, very carefully, I unzipped the opening of our tent, just about five or so inches, and I looked out to see what was rustling outside. I still remember, 40 years later, the terror I felt when I saw what was lurking just outside. It was some type of wild dog. But most horribly, it had three heads, like a cerebrus. It was like a thing from hell. It was black and had glowing red eyes. It was terrifying. I promise this is the only thing I could think of as a cerebrus. 
My eyes were glued to this thing as it began walking around, sniffing. This thing was massive, and the odor of sulfur filled my nostrils. I knew this was something not right. What was striking is its face. It looked all sorts of wrong. This was no normal animal, my friends. This was something else entirely. This being did not belong on this mortal plane. I just closed my eyes and begged God to cause me to pass out. I watched this thing walk around for about a half an hour. It could have been longer. But then, I never see it leave. It just kind of disappeared. I didn't sleep a wink that night, and the sulfuric smell still filled the campsite. That didn't really dissipate for a while. When sunrise came, I was so glad to go and wake my parents. Of course, they said it was a bad dream, and the smell had dissipated by then. They told me this nightmare was childish and delusional. But 40 years ago now, 40 years, I'm confident by what I saw. At the time, I didn't know it was a cerebrus. I didn't know what it was. But as I got older, and my interest in the paranormal and cryptozoology grew and deepened, I learned more about the various kinds of creatures and demons, like a cerebrus, for example, and to know that usually when there's a demonic sighting or encounter, the sulfuric smell is often accompanied by it. That's why I know what it was, that it was not from this world. I live in a small town with an even smaller population. We're pretty isolated. A lot of the locals think there's no way this could have been anything but a large animal, or something like that. But I knew better. I'd already read some cryptid stories before, and heard about the possibility of it being something else besides the usual predators. You see, something was killing the dogs. Three of them in the town so far. If it had been livestock, hell, even chickens, there would have been concern, but dogs? Man's best friend is a whole different ballgame. And these weren't your Hollywood-type chihuahua or purse pups. We're talking full-sized working dogs that could be mistaken for a wolf. So, action needed to be taken. The first two were killed in their yards. Torn, ripped apart. The third was in the nearby woods. You see, these folk were positive. Whatever creature was doing it must live in this vast expanse of woods that bordered our town. Whatever it was must live real deep into them as nobody could think of something they'd seen or hunted, especially no dens or anything. Of course, a few men and their dogs went out to go hunting. So far deep, they needed to camp out overnight. One of the men is meant to keep watch, and of course, he falls asleep. Find the dogs at his feet is no longer there. Just a bloody leash. No sign whatsoever of the dog or the predator. Nobody heard a thing. The man is enraged and also adamant that he hadn't just dozed off and the others were inclined to believe him. They grabbed their flashlights and guns and headed further, deeper into the woods, towards the caverns which had been condemned years ago due to being extremely unsafe from rock falls. They get to almost the furthest they can possibly go without risking their lives when the remaining dogs begin howling and whining all together, like some sort of wolf pack. The men can't budge. They just all stood in a circle, howling, whining, when all of a sudden, there was a noise like a crackling from one of the caves, like something snapped and those dogs ran from their owners, raced all the way back to camp. The men chased the dogs, and they didn't want to stick around either. They all loaded up their stuff, and as soon as it was light enough to move out, they got out of there. Those dogs, they took, they were hunting dogs, working animals who were only afraid of their master. We're talking about bloodhounds, blue healers, German shepherds even. Dogs that are designed for this. But they were all terrified. And although I wasn't part of that group of men, I know everything they saw was true. As the man that fell asleep, who said that would never happen? That was my dad. 
I believe everything you said. There's something deep in those dens in the caves. I know there's something, but we can't get down there. It makes me shudder to think what it could be. I was out hunting in Denton County, Texas, and I just shot a beautiful eight-point buck. Was taking it back to my truck when something large, black, and large as a man, fast-moving across the path about 20 feet in front of me, leaving two gigantic blobs of mud behind it. It didn't stop running until it was out of my sight line and back behind the trees in front. I could hear it sort of panting. I had been hunting for 20 years and never seen anything like it. But I also come from a long line of hunters, and when I was a kid, my grandpappy used to tell a tale of old Lenny, a huge black creature he once mistook for a bear. Apparently, the story goes that he shot at this thing until he'd ran out of bullets. But even then, it didn't go down. It just kept running. And the only evidence Grandpappy had was that it had even been there were several piles of dung. Of course, all his buddies thought he had had too much moonshine. But he always swore he'd find old Lenny again one day. He's long since passed, but as I quickly reloaded my shotgun, I knew I had to try and get that thing to prove to people he was telling the truth. I ran after it into the trees where I could still hear it. It was still pretty early in the morning, roughly 6 a.m. The sun wasn't fully yet risen, so the woods were still somewhat dark, especially in the tree coverage under the canopy. But being experienced and having already bagged me a kill, I had my vision binoculars with me. I put them on, and as I ran into the trees, gun locked and loaded, and ready to shoot, I saw this thing. Now, they were an expensive piece of technology, one that had never failed me before. I enjoyed a hunt in the dark, so am fully used to them. But the strange thing was, despite seeing that thing run into the trees and hearing it panting, the goggles didn't pick up a thing. I could hear it breathing not too far away, although it seemed to be moving again as the sounds kept coming from various directions. The goggles didn't pick up a thing. I even took them off to see if I could find the creature with my eyes rather than relying on what had to be somehow flawed technology. But it was as if this thing had just somehow blended in with the surroundings. I'm usually a patient guy, but I was all riled up. Not being to find this thing was making me mighty angry. I yelled something out at it, not expecting any kind of response since, after all, it was highly unlikely this creature could understand. But then, suddenly, it rushed me. One moment there was nothing. Next, old Lenny was about to tackle me, so I began shooting. I knew I got him at least a few times as I'm a sure shot, but much like then, I stood there for a moment, collecting myself when I noticed the same piles. The piles of feces, not mud. It had been old Lenny, at least an old Lenny Jr., but does nothing to explain why it was defecating. I've heard all nature of weird creatures, but one that defecates? What could that even be? I mean, is that usual behavior for a Bigfoot or a creature like this? I was on a camping trip with my dad. We were in the middle of nowhere, and it was pretty late at night. I awoke from a strange dream that felt very real. The sun had set, and it was very dark outside. Almost black, except for the bright stars that were above us. I could hear crickets chirping nearby. My dad was one of those very lucky guys who can sleep basically anywhere through anything, so he was still snoring. I considered trying to wake him for a moment, as despite knowing it had to have been a dream. I am still feeling very uneasy and unnerved. Something was off. But I also felt silly for being scared from just a dream. It was pretty warm in the tent, so despite feeling anxious, I unzipped the opening, going outside. 
the weed set up a sort of den area just in front of the actual tent. Some camping chairs, a cooler. I sat in one of the chairs and grabbed a bottle of water, which, whilst no longer cold, was still refreshing, just to quench thirst. I was starting to feel a little better. The dream was fading, and the cool air was helping too. I just sat there, surprisingly comfortable chair, looking up at the stars, listening to my father snore, and the occasional chirps or rustling from critters and the nearby trees. Of course, the inevitable happened, and once I had finished the water, I had to pee. Despite being a couple of guys, we had standards, and one of those was you don't pee close to the tent. Common decency, right? So, I grabbed the flashlight, head over to the spot we designated the John, not too far from the camp, but far enough away that it didn't stink, and we weren't likely to step in it. Of course, these things always happen mid-flow. Those feelings from after midnight came rushing back, and all of a sudden, I was filled with this inexplicable sense of dread. As soon as I stood there, shorts were on my knees. I felt something that would probably have made my bladder go loose if I hadn't already been peeing. A hot breath on the back of my neck, and a foul odor, like something unwashed and rotting. I felt it again, so hot and heavy. I actually felt some of the hair on my neck move, and the smell worsened. Gone off meat and unflushed toilets. And as I stood there trembling, thinking I was going to end up as something's dinner, someone's plaything, I heard my dad yell out to me. My heart leapt, and I heard a crunch behind me, like something heavy stepping on leaves and branches, as I could no longer feel the hot breath. I whipped around, the flashlight there, but nothing. I ran back to the tent, my shorts still around my ankles. These days we laugh about it, and my dad likes to remind me of how I flew embarrassingly fast into the tent, half naked and crying. Probably just suggested I scare myself. But I can't shake that feeling. Something large enough to be able to breathe onto me. Something that accompanied with the smell of death and something fast enough to disappear out of sight within seconds. There's no way I imagine that. It was roughly 1 a.m., August 21st, 2013. My buddy Joey, 24, and I were heading out to our favorite moon-watching spot in the North Main Woods. We had been to this area many times and had some weird happenings, but nothing like this encounter. It's nice out there. It's completely dark. If you ever try stargazing or moon spotting in the suburbs, you won't get to see the true beauty of the sky. All the street lights and light pollution really disguise the mood in the sky. But out there, it was total darkness. You can't even see your hand in front of your face. Not without flashlights. We'd seen lights in the sky that moved way too fast to be stars or aircraft. We'd experienced loss of time and our phones, watches, anything digital losing power, despite being fully charged. But we'd never seen anything like this. First off, we'd never actually seen another person or anything out there. It was always just us two. So, we were more than surprised to see evidence that anybody else was out there. We could hear a low rumbling noise that we just could not quite place and there was definitely a light source that had never been there before. That was when we also realized we could smell smoke. The light source must have been a campfire, which was really odd. The whole time we'd been going there, since we were kids really, we'd never known of anybody camping out in that spot. It just seemed odd. We headed over to where it seemed to be coming from, and then we saw it. Now, I don't know exactly to know what we were expecting to see. Part of me thinks we want to believe I was hoping for Adventure Scouts. Another part knows I was secretly wishing for a UFO and little green men sitting around it. What we actually saw in many ways was even more bizarre and hard to explain. You see, there were what looked to be three figures. Two looked real tall, like maybe seven feet 
and the third maybe five or so feet, smaller. They were naked as far as we could tell, and although they were partly in shadow, as the only light around them was very dim, we couldn't tell if they were male or female. To put it politely, you couldn't see any obvious parts. They seemed to be androgynous. Now, you may be wondering, couldn't we tell from their faces? Well, that was actually the weirdest part. Their heads were covered, and so far as we could tell, there wasn't even any eye holes or anything. They never moved. They were just standing there. We stood and watched them for maybe ten minutes or so, and they never moved. Never even said a thing. In the end, we were really freaked out. We just left. It was far too weird to even explain. I am writing this from Atlanta, Georgia. Myself and my mother had a very unusual experience last February 2020, right before COVID hit. We were going wedding dress shopping in a town nearby. It was a cool day, the perfect temperature for a girl's day out, despite it being in winter. We had a full day planned, champagne, cocktails, lots of treats, but Something happened that has compelled me to put pen to paper, so to speak. To make sense of something gruesome and deadly that tarnished what should have been one of the best days I've had. I just tried on my wedding dress and had it all picked out. My mother and I were leaving the shop feeling blissful. Everything was working out. That's when we noticed this awful burning smell, like sulfur. It was a cold day, so the smell was very out of place and very unusual. When we looked behind us, we saw nothing, so we kept on walking. However, when we got to the car, we both noticed the smell had gotten much worse. I checked to see my tires and everything all seemed fine. The next thing I heard was my mother screaming. She grabbed onto me. Behind us was a terrifying creature, such that I had never seen before. It was serpentine in appearance, maybe about eight feet long. But instead of the unusual pattern snake, which I was accustomed to seeing, this thing was red, like it had been skinned. It was repulsive. In addition to that, this thing had long protrusions sticking out of its head. It appeared to have multiple sets of teeth or fang-like protrusions sticking out of its mouth. The creature was moving around in circles around the parking lot, coming out of the nearby woods, apparently stopping and smelling the ground. The next thing I heard my mother was retching behind the car, wailing, evidently horrified by the sight. I dropped my dress on the ground and Beast slithered up right next to it. It moved the dress leaving a stain. Eventually, I don't know if this was a snake or what, but I'll call it a snake for the continuity of the story. It left us both dumbfounded, confused, and completely terrified. We got into the car immediately, calling the cops. They got there and the cop was drinking coffee, asked if we had smoked any weed. He was definitely a very staunch individual, blamed it all on the weed even though we hadn't had any and didn't even smoke. We told them we had saw this thing and felt lucky to be alive. We were both terrified for anyone else who came across it. Especially, right around where it went back into in the woods was this patch of field where there were more houses. We both felt like this thing could be a danger if anybody else ran into it. I even showed him my wedding dress and the blood mark, but he just dismissed it. Needless to say, we went home deeply agitated and distressed. Obviously, I didn't wear that dress and couldn't get my money back either, as it was badly damaged. I burned it, hoping that the ritual would burn the memory right out of my head. But it didn't, and it hasn't. I know it's probably extreme of me to do that, but this sighting affected me. The creature and the experience still very much haunt my memory to this day and I often have nightmares of visions of it sleeping in wake hours. It's unbearable. I'm also carrying a child now, 
and have no idea how traumatic this memory is, how it could be affecting my unborn child. The only thing I know of that I've heard is that the smell of sulfur is often accompanied with the sighting of demons. And did I see a real life demon? I don't know. But I beg you, if you have any information on what this creature is or has been, please get in touch. I'm putting together a strong case and submitting it. I hope that this matter will be investigated thoroughly and maybe will be solved eventually. Anyway, I still have sleepless nights and often feel overwhelmed by the sheer memory. I hope I can one day heal and get better. I do not want to live in a world where such creatures exist and haunt my memory. For the sake of my child, I will fight this creature until it is found. I beg anyone who reads this and encounters something similar to come forward. It was 1972, and I was on a field trip with some fellow classmates. Being only 18 then, and thought I knew everything. This was in Denver, Colorado. A lot of forestry. Plenty of room to do whatever we wanted. At night, when the teachers and the rest of everybody else was asleep, a few of us seniors would go to a quiet space and smoke weed. On this one night, it was just me and my friend Margaret and her boyfriend. We were talking about the latest music, and at the time, glam rock was just a booming thing. It was an exciting time to be young. Style was everything, and expressing who you were individually was an art. More so than today. No longer did we feel the need to be shamed or be like everybody else. Well, as it happens on this one night, we saw something very strange in the woods. We were walking, I would say briskly, back to the camp after our hash, when we saw what appeared to be a scarecrow hanging from the trees above us. It was pretty freaky, and might I add disturbing. It was around the same time the Manson family and I feared that some crazy commune or cult we're going to jump out and attack. But we still kept still, just watching. It was dressed like a man and was most definitely a scarecrow. Its face, though, was painted like a clown. And it had the face of a clown that would visit a kid's birthday. That made the sight even more disturbing. I felt sick and grabbed Margaret and James, her boyfriend, tried to get them to go back to camp. They just stood transfixed. Something terrifying then happened. The creature moved its head down, stared down at us, with its clown-like face, smiled and laughed at us. It was a menacing, cold laugh, one that seemed to send hair on our bodies upward in shock and terror. We all screamed and were spooked. We went and ran, but when we did, we found we hit a dead end. The creature did a 360 turn and was now staring at us again, laughing. Now it began to turn into more of a shadow. We turned again and found ourselves at yet another dead end. This is it. We were going to die here by this horror. I didn't know what to do or where to hide. There were no cell phones at the time anyway, so no teacher or parent or officer could ever be contacted. We felt so helpless. We kept running, and luckily this time made it to our camp, where everybody was fast asleep. Not sure if it was a bad trip or if we had actually seen what we saw, but in the morning, we all agreed that it was real, and we had seen something dreadful and horrific. We all agreed not to tell anybody, as they would either think we were drug crazed or crazy, and we were all on the verge of going to college. We didn't need any bad rap. But that experience changed us. We could no longer be around each other. That memory of the incident was written across all of our faces. I truly believe we experienced something paranormal out in those woods. It's been nearly 50 years now, and I still can't look at a scarecrow or a clown to this day. Some things are just not the same anymore. I wonder if I was crazy or if this was a bad trip. But I hope one day I'll find answers, before I die, about what it was. Maybe, just maybe, it's still out there. I 
I'm not sure I can ever forget that night. Even though it was over 20 years ago, I was at college in Liverpool, England. I was walking home from my part-time job at the coffee shop. The night was still and I felt so grateful to have a job that could make me self-sufficient and look after myself. No one was going to tell me otherwise. I mean, my job was awesome. I loved being a barista. As I was walking home, I went to call my then boyfriend to tell him to put on some dinner for me. Cell phones were pretty much just out, and my phone then was this huge clunky thing. It didn't have much battery or network. I wasn't surprised then when it didn't reach him, so I just shrugged it off and kept walking. My usual walk home was through residential streets. Usually, they were abuzz with activity as they were student housing. But on this night, all seemed deathly still. I remember laughing a bit, thinking it was some weird apocalypse movie. I thought of a joke to tell my boyfriend. I felt like a proper white girl in a horror movie walking home. Although I had gotten used to walking everywhere by myself, I wasn't freaked out or anything. As I turned to go on one of the roads, I realized it was closed as there had been some major cracks in the road's surface. I heard whispers of something odd happening during the night, and residents had awoke to a screeching, screaming sound, only to find a huge hole in the residential street. I remapped my route and just went an alternative one. This route was a little darker, so I decided to walk more briskly. When I was about halfway up this path, which I was surrounded by woodland and foliage, I heard something. Now, this something was whimpering, all the way to my right. I had a fear it was a child or dog, so I looked over instinctively. However, it was no child or dog, but rather something unlike anything I'd ever seen in my life. It was a creature, about the size of a dog, but with no fur or skin. Rather disgusting looking. Its legs were small and webbed, and it looked like it had no idea how to move. Then, to answer my questions, I see this large thing pulling out of its head, and as this thing moved along, it kind of moved all around. I know it's hard to explain, but it moved kind of like it glided. I had the impression it could even fly had it moved right. Its face was disturbing, kind of mashed in with dead skin, dark, large black eyes, and its mouth opened to reveal a lizardish mouth small fangs and large cave-like opening for food. I had watched enough nature documentaries to know the damage this creature could do with just a small amount of bite. Not taking my eyes away from this strange creature, eventually I got away. I still remember this incident to this day and have never really forgotten it. I feel grateful to be alive and wonder what could have happened often. Not many people believed me when I told them about my experience. I know it's true.